Okay, now we're going to begin. You should have your books out. Um, we're going to begin by getting us to come up the front. Now, you have some post-it notes. There are a little worse for wear. So I know some of them, the glue's worn off a little bit. If you've um, got one and you're trying to like, put it on your table and it's not sticking, like try it out now to see if it doesn't stick. If it doesn't stick, then I have blue tack out here that you can use to put on that and then you can stick it where I want you to do it. Have a look at the board right now. You can see I've just got a straight line. Uh, this is not just any straight line, this is a spectrum. So a spectrum is what happens, by the way, for anyone who needs it, blue tack will be there. Okay. A spectrum is what happens when you're comparing things, right, that are neither simply one or another, but sometimes they can be in between, right? So for example, we say, oh, okay, there's the UV spectrum. It's not like it's either there's no UV and or there's you know, you go outside and you die because you get sunburned that badly, okay? There's like a range in between. It's like, oh, it's kind of okay today. No, it's pretty severe. It's extreme, whatever. There's a spectrum. So this is a spectrum. Now what this spectrum is about is a spectrum of probability. Or if you like, I prefer, because that's a big technical word. I prefer these words because they're words which mean a lot more to me than a technical phrase. Chance and uncertainty, and I think they're really important words for you to write down. The whole idea that there's something, it might happen, but you don't really know what might happen. Like for example, when I take this coin, and I flip it, and you all call what? Heads. 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 And very good for the people who called heads, because that's what it was, okay? But you didn't know. Some of you called tails, you were uncertain. Now if you were prompt enough to come in and get a um, post-it note, what I want you to do is, I'd like you to come to the board, right? And if you need sheets that I have, which admittedly I kind of <coughs> threw in there because they are words that we use in our language to talk about chance and uncertainty. But they aren't as common and some of them are kind of um, some of them kind of old fashioned. So for example, I'll go with this one first. Uh, if I said something is even odds, right? Any don't, don't shout it out yet, but does anyone know what that would be? Hands up how many of you think you know? Yeah, okay. Nathan, how would you describe even odds? The middle. Yeah, the middle. I think even odds are what you do, what you get when we did this before, right? Even odds means you have just as likely a chance of getting one outcome versus the other. It's heads again. That's weird. Okay, so I would say even odds should be about here. Okay, I've got another one. <laughs> um, Buckley's chance. Does anyone have their parents say to them, you have Buckley's chance of that? You have Buckley's chance? Look, let me, let me try and... Um, tell you because you know how sometimes in language you can know what words mean even if you don't know what they mean so for instance ask me if i'm going to win the lottery just ask me are you gonna win the lottery <laughs> buckley's chance right now even if you don't know <laughs> what that means you can, you can probably tell by the way i said it what do you think where do you think this should no, fit <laughs> it should be it should be pretty far over here i'd say it's very very uh very unlikely right not likely to happen well that's actually pretty good odds if it's like that far over to that well, side. Well, I haven't, I haven't. You win the lottery and it's like not it's completely kind of Yeah, that's true, that's true. Actually, I should probably, just personally, I should say it here because I don't buy lottery tickets. So it's literally, okay. One more thing, yeah. Uh, could it be instead of X's and, could it be zero and one? We'll get to, we'll get to some numbers in a second. We're just trying to get this language in our head. We will get there. I got one more. Fat chance. Fat chance. What does fat chance mean? Is that is that very likely or unlikely? Unlikely. 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 Again, again, someone will usually say to you, fat chance, right? Which means actually it's not very likely, which is very funny because some of you have noticed that slim chance is rightly in this area. In fact, as it happens, this is what English is like. I feel, I guess I feel bad if you're trying to learn English and you're like, what? Slim chance and fat chance literally mean exactly the same thing. Okay, um, because why is that by the way? Because slim and fat do not mean the same thing. Why, how, on what grounds could they mean the same thing? It's basically like fat is kind of sarcastic. Right? That's exactly what it is, it's sarcasm, right? And this is baked into our language that you can say fat chance with the least sarcasm possible, but unfortunately, that's what it means now. Okay, let's have a look at some of these other words. You've got impossible, I will move this over because sometimes you can actually happen. Impossible means there's absolutely no way it could happen. No way it could happen, right? And then on the opposite end, uh, this is interesting, we've got certain here, certain, definite, for sure. I noticed possible is here. Now, 
Um, possible is a bit of a funny word because when we talk about like it might happen or it might not, if you had to put a number, like you know, what it, what are your chances numerically on this? You kind of in the middle. You can't really yeah. necessarily pin him down anywhere, right? Because something could be possible, but still very very unlikely, right? Like for example, um, it's possible to take. 10 dice, and we're going to do a lot of things with dice yeah. in this topic. You could take 10 dice and roll them, and it's possible that they all come up sixes. It's not physically impossible, so right? Be like in the middle. But, but that's not very likely. On the other hand, I could say, uh, you know, roll an even number on a, on a die, and that would be right in the middle. Or I could say, you know, it's possible that the sun rises tomorrow, which is pretty much, do you know what I mean? So this guy kind of goes everywhere. So I guess we'll just put him in the middle. Um, you've got certain, definite, for sure, all on top of each other. Likely, probable, quite likely. I think these are all in about the right spot. Okay. Now, I hope you've uh, got the chance to write some of these down. Now that they're in roughly the same right spots. Okay. Uh, it is, by the way, actually crucially important that you get this language down. Right. This is a mathematical topic, but mathematics has its own language and words and verbs that you need to wrap your head around. But it wouldn't be mathematics if we didn't at least try to think, can I, can I express some of this numerically, okay? So for example, can you see there's one in here that says 50-50? 50-50, yeah, I don't know. Okay, now, that's a great suggestion for those numbers. Before I put them down, I'm gonna try and explain why, why I get to those numbers from here. Okay, now 50-50, what are the 50 and the 50 referring to? Because that's an abbreviation. Actually, tender, yeah. It means like you have equal on each side. Yeah, that's right. These are both the same, right? But why is it not like, why is it not 10-10? Or like 20-20? Like that's what we say vision. We don't say vision's 50-50, we say vision's 20-20. Yeah, I don't know. So you have like, the total's 100% and... Ah, yes. Uh, a percentage is what we kind of think of as total, right? So the 50 and the 50 stand for 50 percent, right? You get 50% and 50%. That adds up. So it stands to reason that if 50% is right there in the middle, then 0% will be here. And that means that right over here for certain definite, uh, for sure, you would call that 100%, right? And in fact, if um, some of you have your phones, right? And uh, I don't know if any of you um, were close enough to the area um, where last night you heard the rain come in sort of yeah. late evening, right? And you look at the forecast and it'll say like such and such percentage of precipitation, of rain, okay? How so we have this idea percentage? baked in. Like, do they just guess? Oh, it might be 70%. You, you, should go, you should go look up the Bureau of Meteorology for why they give you numbers, right? Because that's a great question to ask, fantastic question. Now, you can see zero, 50, 100%. I want you to think back to um, a couple of topics ago when we did fractions, decimals, and percentages, right? Now, I'll just quickly write down here, right? Fractions, decimals, and percentages. Why were these three ideas, why were they lumped together in one topic for? Why did we do them all at the same time? Any suggestions? Yeah, but not. Because you can like convert one to the other. Very good, right. Fractions, decimal, decimals, I almost said percentages, and percentages, right? They're really just lots of different schemes for saying the same thing. When you've got like, you know, not quite the whole thing, or some part of it, okay? So let's write down, we've got percentages already on here, right? Let's write all of these as well as fractions. What's up? What's 50% as a fraction? I've got a new color. 50%. It's a half, right? A half. The reason why you know it's a half is because what does percent mean again? Percent. It means out of 100. 50 out of 100 is the same as 1 out of 2. We call them equivalent fractions, don't we? Okay. So if you've got 1 out of 2 over there, what's 0% as a fraction? It's just 0, isn't it? I guess I need to put a circle around it. There's a donut, okay? And 100% as a fraction is 100 out of 100, which is 1. Okay? So, I can write a probability as a percentage. I can write it as a fraction. But I also can write it as a decimal. I've got one more color here that I'll use. Okay? So, for instance, a half. How would you write that as a decimal? 0 0.5. Um, one is already a decimal, isn't it? I suppose you could say 1.0, but that, you don't really need to do that. Um, and in the same way, this fraction, zero, is also a decimal. I mean, you 
could write 0, 0.0 as well. But they're all different ways of saying the same thing. Okay? So that's why we would say, oh, okay, if I said, oh, there we go. if I said this coin toss, right, I could say the probability of getting, what would you like to call? Heads. Heads. Heads, Heads. Heads again? Tails. 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 Oh. Tails. Okay. The probability of getting tails, you could say it's either 50% of getting tails, a half, or 0 0.5. Okay. Now, let's actually write that down because we're going to introduce some language in here and some notation to make things easy for us. What I just said, right, the chance or, let's use the proper word now, probability. The probability of flipping tails is 50%. Or you could write a half or you could write 0 0.5. They all mean the same thing. That's right, if it's a fair coin, okay. okay? Which I hope it is. Um, now, this you can see is true, but it's very long. And you guys know that mathematicians are always searching for more concise, more efficient ways of saying things. You can probably guess in this topic, we're gonna start a lot of sentences by saying the probability of, probability of this, probability of that, all different kinds of things that might happen. So instead of writing that, we just simply abbreviate it by saying Okay, P for probability, right? So that's my abbreviation. So when you see the letter P, what it tends to indicate, especially when you see these kinds of, you know, uh, language or numbers, is a probability. Now when I say of flipping tails, again, that's a really long way to say it. Um, you could even just say the probability of tails, because you kind of assume you're flipping it, unless you're uncoordinated, you just drop it on the ground, like me, okay? So instead what I do, of saying this whole sentence, is I write brackets, here, and what I put in the brackets is the event I'm interested in, okay, which is tails. Okay. Yes, good. So I just want to make sure we've got the right notation together. So this is the event that we're interested in, okay. And lastly, I say, well, that's you know, I have a symbol for is, right, which is equals, okay, it's that, and I could say fifty percent, or I could say a half, or I could say zero point five. They'd all be the same, okay. Uh, I guess I'll write a half. Now, we know kind of intuitively that it's a half. How far did you get on Thursday into explaining why is it a half? Where do the one and the two come from? Yeah. Because there are two possible outcomes. Yeah, fantastic. So there was a phrase for possible outcomes, which is correct, that starts with, um, it's a two word phrase, starts with S and S, so you remember, for either heads or tails, the number sample of space. these. Very good, sample space, good job. That's this um, number on the denominator, right? That's the sample <coughs> space. That's the number of things that could possibly happen, right? Heads or tails, there are only two outcomes. And where does the one come from? Yeah? Could it be three? I, su I suppose so. It could land on its edge, but actually, yeah. at least when I'm, when most of you guys flip it, um, like you tend to catch it oh, and then put it down, yeah. right? So I guess we really only have two outcomes, right? Uh, and we don't have a freakish coin. So <laughs> two outcomes possible. That one on the top is what's the event? How many of these events are there, right? We call them favorable events. Favorable as in they're the ones you want. Okay, now for instance, I know it's a bit silly, but I could ask, what's the probability of flipping heads or tails? Well, I could ask that. It's a silly question because the answer is a bit obvious, <coughs> but I could still ask it, right? What is the probability of getting heads or tails? Why? I've got it here, right? You're certainly going to get heads or tails. You'll definitely get one of them. It's 100%, right? But where does the 100% come from? It comes from how many favorable events are there? Heads or tails. There are two. And then there are, what's the sample space? Two. Also two. So it'd be two out of two. Yeah, it's two out of two, which, which of course is 100%, one, 1.0. Okay. All the same. 